In a city beleaguered by less than stellar developments, more often than not in the form of so-called iconic towers, London has at least one glimmer of hope. This is King's Cross, a 27-hectare mixed-use development in the center of the British capital, nestled against one of its busiest transit hubs. Only half the buildings here are complete, yet already it has become a destination neighborhood. Whether it's diners heading to Granger & Co. or the German gymnasium, swimmers headed to the Ouse Architect Design Pond, or design lovers streaming into the end-of-year show at world-renowned arts college Central St. Martins. It's expected that this year, around 30,000 people will be visiting King's Cross every day. For that, we have to thank its developers, Argent, who have focused just as much on a manifesto of good living as they have on a bottom line. Once we'd been confirmed, uh, one of our first jobs was to write this first document called Principles for a Human City, which was published in July 2001, and we set out 10 principles for what we thought should be a fantastic piece of this world city. And I think the amazing thing about King's Cross is that it's the one project I know where we haven't just achieved the vision, but we've gone beyond it. And the place is setting new standards all the time. To us, the master plan is really, the, it's the nolly plan. It's the inverse, it's the, it's the public realm. That's what confers the value. It's creating the arteries of the city for people and goods and trade and value to flow. And then the buildings need to respond to that public realm and enhance it. And that's the test to us for any good building. But in order to invite the city into King's Cross, Argent prioritized the completion of its public spaces, from Granary Square with its benches and fountains to the revamped canal sidewalk or the grassy Gasholder Park. There will be 10 new squares and parks here, and nearly all are ready for use. It's no doubt a, a pivotal moment for how we knew that this place was going to be a success locally as well as, if you like, for London was when we opened Granary Square and we just watched urban life come and invade and use Granary Square. And I remember one of the early mornings standing in the square and one of the guys that runs the estate team was standing there and he said to me, they're all coming with their beach towels and their scooters and their kids and their dogs. What do you want us to do? Uh, and uh, we said, encourage it, um, which I don't think was the answer that he was necessarily expecting. That's not to say that commissioning good architecture will be any less of a key component in the success of King's Cross. International names such as Thomas Heatherwick, David Chipperfield, and Stanton Williams will all have buildings here, yet none will shout. There are no real iconic buildings. They're all very good in their details, but they all sit together quite comfortably with the other. They don't fight uh, with each other, and I think one of the great things that they've done here is they've actually made the historic buildings really work for the regeneration project. The Central St Martins development was one of the first buildings to be occupied. It's an old granary building dating back to the 19th century. It's been beautifully restored by Stanton Williams architects and it creates a real buzz because it's a university, it's a creative centre. It's a focus for the site, but it also means that it enlivens all these public spaces around here. Strong ideas about people, community, and urban character are paired with an enviable roster of occupants. Google, Universal Music, Louis Vuitton, and Havas have all signed up. We've always tried to avoid the idea here that King's Cross would be a campus of a particular type of industry. Uh, we've always wanted it to be a kind of fusion, a melting pot, uh, um, an eclectic mixture of different things where art can meet science, where it can meet business, where it can meet other types of commerce. And one of the things we've realised in talking to all these businesses is they want to be near other types of businesses. It's that um, interplay that so many of them are, are, are looking for. So breadth and depth uh, is what we've been trying to, to provide here. High quality architecture, open public space, and world-class businesses and institutions. These are all ingredients in the success of King's Cross. But most importantly, it's about a long-term vision with quality of life at its core. The methodology they've used to deliver it is a very powerful one and creates this very coherent piece of city. And I think that's particularly important for London because London, you know, we all know of it as a city of villages. So that means creating specific characters in different places, whether it's north, east, south. They, they, these should feel different, and so they should be curated in the sort of way that uh, Argent here have managed to curate King's Cross. However, the work here is far from finished. Cities are constantly evolving, and so the Argent team will stay hard at work to keep King's Cross a lively and dynamic part of London. 
even after the construction cranes have all gone. In London, from Monocle, I'm David Michel.